Maybe you're like me when I first got started with kettlebells. You found out about this awesome training tool that is known for its versatility. The ability to draw from a huge variety of exercises is impressive, but also intimidating. So with this video, I want to help you clear up some confusion, tell you that it's all okay, that you don't have to be scared of the kettlebell, and teach you the top 10 best kettlebell exercises from beginners to advance. But before we get started, I have a gift for you, 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts for free. Check the first link in the description. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstark here. With these top 10 kettlebell exercises I'm about to show you, we're going to categorize them into two categories. The first ones that I'm going to show you are the easy ones. You can do them if you're just getting started. And the second part consists out of those exercises where you need to have some skill, which means it is reserved for advanced folks who already put in some time with the kettlebell. Exercise number one is the kettlebell deadlift. This exercise works your posterior chain. This means your hamstrings, your glutes, as well as your lower back and builds it into a single strong unit. Grab your kettlebell, place it between your legs, approximately in the middle of your feet. You have a shoulder width stands. Now you're hinged. This means you push your hips back, your upper body leans forward. Make sure your spine stays straight. Now you want to grab the kettlebell. This means I have to sit down a little by bending the knees a little bit, but you can see my back is still straight. Now I grab the kettlebell. I pull my shoulders back, now I push from the middle of my foot, standing up, and once I reach the top position, I fully contract my glutes and push my hips into the kettlebell. Then I come back down, hinging again, pushing the hips back, upper body knees forward, and I drop the kettlebell right there between my legs. The next exercise is the kettlebell hand-to-hand -hand row. A great exercise for not only your big back muscle and your biceps, but also for your lower back. And a small side note, almost all of these exercises train your full body to some extent. So you grab your kettlebell again between the middle of your feet. Now the handle sits in a vertical position towards me. Now I hinge again, but I now grab the kettlebell with only one hand and I lean towards my left side a little bit. I can place my elbow on my knees or my quads and then I pull my arm close to my body upwards so that I feel contraction in my back. I place the kettlebell back down. Now I'm switching to the other side, shifting body weight, pulling the weight back up and placing it back down. The next exercise is the kettlebell lunge. We now focus on your upper part of your leg and we isolate it to a certain extent. Now you wanna grab your kettlebell and bring it up into a so-called goblet grip. We do this by swinging the bell between our legs and grabbing the kettlebell by the bell itself so that the handle points towards the floor. Now, I imagine I have a shoulder with stands and I'm standing on tracks and I stay on these tracks as I move throughout the exercise. I take a big step back on my toes. Now I go down on my knees come back up and go back into my starting position. Many beginners actually have problems doing the exercise with the kettlebell. So if you experience these problems because you're still too weak in the legs, do it without any weight. The next exercise is the double-handed press. And with this exercise, we're concluding the category that is well suited for beginners. Now I want to start with the kettlebell a little bit in front of me. I grab it by the handle, tilt it towards me. Now I swing the bell between my legs and then I insert both of my thumbs inside the window of the kettlebell and I grab the kettlebell with my fingers by the bell itself. One, two, three. Now the handle makes contact with my chest, my knees are locked, my glutes are tight, and now I press the bell overhead. Once it reaches its top position, the so-called top fixation, I have my elbows fully locked and the kettlebell sits approximately over my head and now I come back down. So let's move up to the next level of exercises which are a little bit more advanced. The first exercise is the goblet squat. Now I bring the kettlebell up into that goblet position that we already know from the lunge. So that's one, two, three. Now I have the bell close to my body. I stand a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. I push my knees out as I'm hinging a little bit. Now pushing the knees out and I want to make sure that my upper body stays as upright as possible. And then if I'm able to, I can place my elbows inside my quads and then I come back up. 
The next exercise is a single hand press which requires more skill than the double handed press. In order to set the press up properly I have to do a clean first which I'm going to explain later in this video. For now we're going to do a so called assist, assisted clean where I clean the bell up using my free hand to support the well, uh, bell, insert my wrist inside the window and then rack the kettlebell close to my body. Looks like this. One, two, Three. With this starting position, I'm now ready to press, which means I have the elbow close to my body, my knees are locked, my glutes are tight, and now I press the handles up first in a straight line, and once the kettlebell reaches the top position, I pull my shoulder blades down, I have the elbows fully locked, and then I come back down. The next exercise is the kettlebell windmill. The windmill is a side hinge, and a T-spine, thoracic spine rotation combined. So as I clean the bell up, I have to understand how to clean it and how to press it and how to stabilize it in the top fixation. I stand like this so that both of my feet with the left side now point to the right side. I'm side hinging, which means I push my hips to the left side. Now I look towards the ceiling to go into the T-spine rotation. I keep the elbow locked, I go down. Now I feel a stretch in this part of my leg. I reach to the floor and then I come back up turning my body towards the position of my feet. Next up is the Turkish get up. The Turkish get up is one of the most well known, most popular and most bang for your buck kettlebell flow that exists. A flow is nothing less than a combination of different exercises into one. I want to recommend to start with the kettlebell Turkish get up overhead, which means I bring the kettlebell overhead and then I have to go through this choreography real slow. So it starts like this. I can either snatch it or clean and press the weight up. I have to make sure that I have a stable position, just like in the windmill. Now I do a so-called curtsy lunge, which means I do a reverse lunge, but in a diagonal position towards my left side. Boom. Now I turn my front leg a little bit to the side. So now I have my uh, open hips, so now I can move. I am not limited in my hips anymore. Now I do a kneeling windmill. I reach down for the floor. And now I bring my rear leg to the front, connect my heels with the floor. Now I sit down, I go down on my elbow, and now using my left leg as, stabilizer, as a stabilizer to go down on my back. And then I bring the kettlebell down into the bottom position. Then I come back up, press it up, shift the whole body weight from my left leg to my right elbow. And then I come back up on my hand. Now I have to push the hips up. Now I pull my leg in as well as rotating the hips to the left side. And now I do a so-called kneeling jerk. I'm shifting my body weight to my right heel. Boom, and then I turn up, so I'm ready for the overhead lunge. In this position, I have a strong position to stand up, and now I can finish the exercise. Now these last three exercises are Ballistics. Ballistics are the USB of the kettlebell because we can profit from these great benefits of momentum. Momentum, however, is a highly unpredictable element that requires a lot of skill to master. Let's start with the swing. I have the kettlebell a little bit in front of me. I have a shoulder width stance. Now I can do two things. I can either do a front hand where the thumb is pointing up or a back hand where the thumb is pointing slightly towards my hip. I like to do the second variation. So now I'm getting ready to swing. I'm hinging, I tilt the bell a little bit towards me. We do the hand-to-hand -hand swing variant, which means as soon as I hip thrust the weight up, I'm switching hands. With the hand-to-hand -hand swing, you wanna focus on two things. First of all, you wanna keep your arms fairly loose. Not too loose, but not too tight. You, you don't wanna do a 
ballistic upright row where your arms is doing all the work. Hip thrusting the weight means that your hinge has to be tight, which means I have to hip thrust the weight with my arm connected to my body. Boom, punch it upwards. And then as the kettlebell drops back down, I want to wait until my arm reconnects with my body because I want to let gravity do its thing. And as soon as I feel this reconnection, boom, then I go back down into this hip hinge movement pattern. The next exercise is the kettlebell clean. You might remember the assisted version that we did in the press. Now we do it without any assistance. With the clean, the most important part is to insert your full wrist inside the window of the kettlebell. It looks like this. One, two, three. This is key. As you insert your wrist inside the window, the weight is now attached to your frame and you don't have to grab it like this. As I drop the weight, I tilt the palm towards me and extend my forearm and I go into this beautiful circle which creates this motion. The final exercise is the kettlebell snatch. This exercise requires the most skill. We use a similar movement pattern from the clean. The only difference is we are now jumping into the hand insertion and finishing the top fixation instead of finishing on the hips. It looks like this. Once the kettlebell's up in the top fixation, I drop it in a similar pattern like in a clean. I'm turning the palm towards me and then I have to make sure that the kettlebell sits as close to my body as possible in the amortization phase as it drops. As a great bonus idea, you can now take all of these exercises and do every exercise for one minute, which will give you a great kettlebell workout that'll give you a lot of bang for your buck. So here's the next thing that you have to do. You have to like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and then go watch this video. This was a recent workout where we incorporated some of these exercises that I just showed you. So if you're looking for a follow along workout, you want to check this out right now.